Don in London, hello. It's June 28th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol. My behaviour equally addictive, under the influence. Towards people, places and things. What do I mean by that? Well, addicted to being with the right people, in the right places, doing the right things and having the right things. And often wanting and wanting and trying to get it right very trying person but I did make a success of a lot of things so when driven that's what happens oh and by the way noises off in the restaurant across the road from me I think a lift is being installed so there's quite a lot of banging and whatever just part of life so addiction and into recovery how did it happen well I got support from family friends people in society, society itself, community and professionals who helped me stay alive long enough to get the message that I could not beat addiction on my own. And every time somebody gave me a suggestion or said I should do this or that in order to get well, I said yes I'll try it. And of course I didn't. I would go away and try and do it on my own. Or get angry and resentful that people wanted to interfere in me and my life. And that's the worst of it. The worst was I couldn't do it on my own, yet anybody who suggested anything or said you should do this, I rejected it out of hand because I didn't want to be messed with. I wanted to try and sort it out myself. That's what I was taught to do, stand on my own two feet and sort it out. And in the end I couldn't. So the moment of clarity where life couldn't get any worse, I thought at the time, I thought, well, okay, I can't do it on my own. Life can't get any worse. I've been on the edge of death too many times, and I need help. So reluctantly, I agreed with, with what everybody had said. But what help? In the end, it came down to understanding enough that there were a bunch of people out there who could find sobriety and keep sober one day at a time. And they were part of the fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. Now I know there are other ways to be sober, but AA works for me. So I talk a lot about it, but I do not represent AA, the fellowship, nor anyone in it, because it's full of unique, authentic people who speak for themselves where they will, either publicly or privately, or in the rooms and groups of the fellowship of AA. And the fellowship of AA is run for each and every individual in it. So we can't speak for other people, we can only speak for ourselves. And often if you go to a meeting, if you're new to the idea, you will, help, you will hear people say, I do not speak for AA, I can only speak for myself. But truthfully, that's the only thing we can do. We speak about why life is working sober. And most often we speak about it when it doesn't work quite as we might have wished or wanted. But most often our needs are met and life goes on. So it can't always be uh, an absolutely wonderful ride along the path of wherever we're going to. It's often very, very difficult. And by sharing our experiences of the difficulties of life, we make progress because we can get feedback. And it can come in many ways, either a quiet word from a friend in a group or because we are sober, we can go to outside sources and get the right help from those me maybe we need to talk to. So the first part of my videos on any day really are my own thoughts about what's going on in my life or, or things which are re real to me. And then some videos from previous years have been tacked on plus the steps re reading from the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, the toolkit, if you like, of the, the fellowship. So for today, me 28th, and these are recollections really. What's come to, come to mind this morning, after a very, very hot night, the hottest day and night in the UK this year, and it's taken till June 28th, past the summer solstice, to have this happen. Our weather's weird. Anyway, for me this one is quite a serious one. 90 meetings in 90 days seemed like a tall order that's what was suggested to me. It was never an order, it was a, a suggestion. And I wanted to belong somewhere instead of sitting in a bar, on a park bench, 
unable to reach out and wishing for my last breath. I went to as many meetings as I could and started to belong again. And that was it, really. I had no... In the end, I had no idea what to do with myself. But asking for help, having got to such a desperate state, it almost seemed like if I had fallen asleep and never woken up again, it might have been preferred. And I think we all get to that stage. I think it's called the jumping off point, where life has no meaning anymore, and we just don't know what to do. But it did seem worth having a go, and those first 90 days were very difficult because I needed to stay somewhere safe and the only safe place I could find where my mind wouldn't wander back into where is the nearest drink and how far away is it seemed to be going to a meeting of AA where people were horribly happy or wonderfully miserable and in between there were people who were just sort of sane and getting on with life and happy in a way which was real and it all seemed very, very strange indeed that these people would welcome me into a meeting where I couldn't look after myself, let alone make any sort of contribution. And then somebody said, why don't you just put your hand out at the door and greet people? And that's how it started. So 90 meetings in 90 days became quite a lot of meetings in 90 days. But I started to feel like I belonged somewhere again. I had the chance to get my identity back. To, well, indeed, the chance to reminisce about my history and find out what had gone on and where it had all collapsed and gone wrong for me. So I was very lucky. You know, that, that, that when somebody said, it's only a suggestion, try 90 meetings in 90 days, there were other suggestions which just made me very cross, like get a job when I didn't have the money to get anywhere or do anything or put a CV together. People try and give you good advice a bit too quick in recovery because they want you to be well and happy and doing something useful. Anyway, it started to happen. And then for me, recovery has been a combination of listening to wisdom in the fellowship of AA, support from fam family, friends, community and professionals, and especially medical professionals who help me understand the true nature of three clinical and chronic conditions I have. And they weren't all apparent at the beginning of my recovery, but uh, the addiction to alcohol is a chronic condition. It doesn't go away and if I were to start drinking again. However, would I stop on my own? I don't want to start again. And what came along in recovery, after following some advice and a suggestion to have a, um, a small surgical procedure, was type 1 diabetes because of a virus which shut off my insulin production. And the other chronic condition, which I'd really sort of known about, but didn't know other than to, I suppose, stiff up a lip and stand on my own two feet, was uh, the clinical condition of depression, which goes in cycles and can be helped with the right medical support. And it can be talking therapy or chemical therapy, and each is appropriate to the person who is asking for help. So. An example recently for me was somebody who still 18 years sober and dry drunk, but he seems to be addicted to the anger and resentment. They have tried everything and they have good reason to have clinical depression. At the same time, they refuse medication and medical advice because they see that as a failing of themselves as a human being, not a failing of the program, because the program says find help where help is needed and uh, accept help and accept suggestions which seem pertinent to you. So it can be very difficult. We can become addicted to the idea that we can survive without medical interventions and still be well when in fact we know full well we're not well or as well as we could be. That is to be normal not to be superhuman, but to be normal, experience, experiencing feelings which are real, the feelings fitting the reality that we're living, rather than a, an angry, angry and resentful person who is still living the past. So it is always a talking therapy, and AA has provided the greatest talking therapy I can ever, ever talk about. <laughs> anyway, some of the other things from past years. Yeah, this, af this afternoon's challenge, that life is difficult. I need to trust a good conscience, my own, 
keep learning and know I am powerless over anyone else and their conscience accept clarity when it happens let go and move on knowing can be dark and when we know other people are living in dark places or dark thoughts and they refuse help or they they are attached to the the darker side of our emotions where they want to be angry and resentful and complain of the world for not giving them what they deserve I think that's what it was about at that time last year but it, knowing it can be dark because we can't pull people out of it if they're really determined to hang on to their old ideas yes meditation spiritual and acceptance to engage in mental exercise as concentration on one's breathing or repetition or a feeling of thought for the purpose of reaching spiritual awareness spiritual the reality of now acceptance what we can do and cannot do today yes yeah, so prayer and meditation I guess this is where mm -hmm. I was coming from meditation spiritual and acceptance to engage in mental exercise to understand what we're doing to concentrate on one's breathing being in the moment of now with the thoughts of now about now for the purpose of reaching spiritual awareness which is living in the moment and I was having a chat with somebody a couple of days ago about you know what is spiritual awareness and can we become spiritual giants and the answer is often we can be a spiritual giant in the moment giant in our own head but not in any other way maybe we are in the moment of now so spiritual is always in the moment of now and we can get more adept at being in the moment of now but it won't make us a giant of spirituality I don't know what that might be and this is the thought which has really been around for a while with me and it's about society as it is today and what I see often happening with uh, large large groups of people some groups have more than others and when I worked in uh, various businesses helping senior people I was aware that they had to make some hard choices about how those companies worked but one of the things which came to me and has stuck with me for me and um, my opinion I guess we cannot keep anything we would take away from others freedom to develop our understanding of living spiritual emotional and physical in the fellowship we offer a path to life on life's terms we do not control we support and challenge then courage faith and confidence may flourish and that's what it is we cannot keep anything we would take away from others which is free will I guess freedom to develop our understanding of living spiritual living in the moment of now emotional our feelings fitting what's going on and physically the best we can be given our situation and in fellowship we offer a path to life on life's terms we don't control other people we support and challenge then courage faith and confidence may flourish and a lot of that's to do with step six and seven step six is where my defects of character come out and I think I know better than you how you ought to live your life and step seven is the courage faith and confidence to get on with my own life and not, not judge other people and what they're up to so that's me for June 28th this year and I woke up feeling horrible my blood sugars weren't too bad for my type 1 diabetes so right injections, right amount get things back in balance but I did forget to take my other medication so extreme pain physically which then brings my mood down when my mood collapses like that life is life can be quite dark for a little while so how do I help myself which is to remind myself what was it like 90 meetings in 90 days well I did do a lot more than 90 meetings in those 90 days and life is never going to be that painful again I hope but pain happens and you know pain is they say t pain is the touchstone of spiritual progress pain reminds us reminds us that we're in the mo moment of now when I get pain it's often associated with uh, poor blood sugar control uh, neuropathies created by di diabetes and uh, general de degeneration of me as I get older and that's pain so I have to do what is appropriate for me to do follow medical advice but if I were to follow some advice I would be living in pain all the time
to a higher degree than I do so I take medical advice it doesn't alter my emotional balance unless I get it wrong uh, in terms of uh, looking after myself it's about being on the same playing field as everybody else to experience normal life feelings as feelings are for the moment of now rather than our history piling in on top of uh, a situation like here we go again or I've never experienced something so wonderful and the answer is of course we have but today it's more real because we feel it and we're not actually medicating away our lives it's a great gift to be sober today and it was one which I thought I would never get I had to ask for help have, I have, have, have had to learn humility I think I had humility but it got distorted somehow by, and bent out of shape by life experiences but now it seems to have come back so I'm learning each day how to learn again and that is one of the things which keeps me going learning what my condition is how am I feeling, why, what can I do and if I don't know what to do I'm sure there's somebody out there who can help me all I need to do is ask anyway more on uh, the daily reflections and other bits and pieces in the long video for June 28th this one might just go out as it is depending on how much time I've got so I will say the serenity prayer which I normally share at the beginning sorry at the end of all videos to God or in good conscience as you come to believe for yourself for yourself what you believe is important to God or in good conscience God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today